Higher seed wearing the white. We talked about Goodwin. We talked about Isabel. But Javon Bess is one of the best defenders in the Atlantic 10, if not the best defender in the Atlantic 10. Meanwhile, he got the award for that. Transfer from Michigan State. There's Bob McKillop, 30th season. 30th season as the head coach at Davidson. Five on that guy can score. And we have our first stoppage of the game. As they try to adjust where the players stand. It's not necessarily a circle. It's the A-10 emblem. And here we go. Game two from Brooklyn for the right to go to the championship as Davidson controls the basketball. A finesse team. A team that loves the three. A team that uses teamwork and assists to their advantage. Here's Frampton to Grady, who leans it in off the front of the rim, and the rebound by French. Get used to us saying that, the rebound by French, <laughs> because he is a physical presence for the Billikens. Little weave to get everybody some touches. I like that at the beginning of a game. In the past, they have gone into French a lot. He's not a great post-up player, and he's a poor free-throw shooter. What he wants to do is be a passer from here. There you see he's double teamed as soon as he touches it. The shot clock is at five. Bass with the shot clock at four, trying to get some separation. He traveled on that little jump stop. He kept on moving. Travis Ford, a longtime head coach, and obviously moves his pivot foot on that play. 22 years a coach, third year with the Billikens for Travis. Yeah, five years at Eastern Kentucky, three years at UMass, eight years at Oklahoma State, and had a very good record at Oklahoma State. It looks like he's 25 years old. He does look like he can still be a point guard for the Wildcats. Here's your favorite guy, Brykovich. Yeah, Brykovich trying to get his way to the basket off the front of the rim, no good, and the rebound by French, his second board. Isabel's the trigger guy here. He's very, very quick. He tried to get it down to Foreman, but Foreman had already got himself positioned to get a yep. rebound. Mr. Brykovich right here, no double team. Not physical, but very skilled player from Austria. Yeah, and if you want to go somewhere and you need a, a language barrier broken, it's Brykovich because he can speak Serbian and German as well as English. Yes. Davidson is able to break the press. Again, cobwebs early. We saw that in game one. Brady's already taken one shot. Here's Frampton. Down to Brankovic. Shot clock at five. Backing his way in. Trying to get deep. Just tried to hook it in. And he's called for the first foul of the game. His French was able to get position. He goes with a right-handed hook the first play. A left-handed hook this play. He gets him right under the basket exactly where he wants, but it rims out. He goes over the back. He did get in foul trouble last night as well, and that's why McKillop is taking him out right away. Kovacevic is in for him. Now, Kovacevic is a little wider, I think, than Brakovic. Yeah, much more physical, but he's from Serbia, so Brakovic can talk to him. That's exactly right. He made it easier for both of them. And another traveling violation called on the Billikens. Three turnovers on three trips. I think it's fair to say that Travis Ford's team is a team that is offensively challenged. They play many, 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 many games, and, and the time that they play well offensively is when they are really tough and thought of as the number one team in the conference. And you say that in the nicest possible way, too, <laughs> because they kind of know their identity. Good feed down low, and the pass is, or the shot is blocked by Foreman. Here come the Billikens in a scoreless game, 17 and a half to play first half. When they played this game and Davidson won, the score was 54-53. Yep. And Isabel is called for a travel. Four turnovers on four possessions. That's perplexing right there. Let's take a look. Does he land on two feet? He does. That is not a travel. You land on two feet, you keep one foot as the pivot foot. That was not a travel. Here's a three-pointer. No good. It's an air ball by Frampton. Several of the games in the tournament yesterday and today have started this way in a very, um, shall we say, uh, nervous kind of situation for most of the players. Surprising? Yeah, it is surprising. They've played so many games, and some of these teams are very experienced. Bess and, and Isabel and Goodwin are very, very experienced players. So you wouldn't expect that. Isabel up top, shot clock at 10. He'll let it fly, and it's too strong. And the rebound is taken out by John Axel Goodmanson. He averages seven boards a game. Can Which is incredible. That? That's yeah. six foot five. That's what he's listed at. 
Brady trying to get a little separation. He has a size advantage on Isabel. Frampton's the shooter, number 34. Best guy in the league from deep. Right there. And he'll get a chance off the screen, and it's good. Right on cue. Show me the way. <laughs> he's got a quick release, and he's got a green light. I mean, green, green light, like St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, green light. 3-0, Davidson is on top. Davidson shoots 35% from beyond the arc. And a hand-checking foul is called. They'll go against Frampton. Well, take a look at Frampton right here. He's going to get the pick, and he's going to get the three-point shot. He pops back out after he screens, and he gets a screen. That was nothing but nylon there. Shot clock resets to 20 with the foul. Four minutes into this game, and St. Louis looking for its first bucket. Here's French. His runner is good, and it's going to go it up. Yeah, you can't do that. And DJ Foreman hit the net, and it pulled everything down. Right. That is offensive basket interference. I think it's a good call. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, this ball's going in for sure, and he pulls on the net. Illegal. Goodmanson's uh, stopped in the back court there. You know, there's a little token press that St. Louis is using, and they're going back into zone. And early in the year, they were not a zone team. I'm a little surprised at this. They've got to extend the zone because Davidson is an excellent three-point shooting team. Yeah, and we will see zone by Davidson defensively. Frampton thought he had that one. He was already heading back and best with the rebound. Moving to his left a little bit. Didn't go straight up and down. 15 and a half to play in the first half. Isabel thought about the three. Best will take the three. It's good. Boy, left he wing is his, up perfect. Left wing is his best position. I've done them seven times this year, and that's the spot he loves the most. So tied up at three. Each team with a three-point field goal. Each team has started cool. Zone defense. It's kind of a matchup, and Davidson is struggling with how to attack it right now. Well, Kellen Grady Woo! has that blocked away by Hassan French. It was a great look, too. Isabel with a little hesitation. Wearing his green shoes in honor of St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Hassan French has an NFL career. He NFL. sure does. Here's Foreman with the rebound. Ball knocked away, and it goes out of bounds. St. Louis moving the ball. Javon Best, the Michigan State transfer, knocks that one in. And, and Goodmanson were the heroes there. And of course, St. Louis, this is common ground for them. They frequently play this way. The games are in the 50s and 60s. St. Louis averages uh, 67 points per game. Defensively, they allow 63. So they have games like this, as Bob alluded to. Watch out for Zero Goodwin. He's a great offensive rebounder. Here's Foreman on the bounce pass by French. That is well designed. Very, very nice. Early in the year, St. Louis went to French in a post-up fashion, and it didn't prove very effective for them. They're not using him that way now. He's much more of a passer. We've seen this two or three times early in the game. He's a guy who hangs out, and you get it to him, and he dunks. Carter Collins in for the first time for Davidson. Started four games when Grady was out earlier in the year. Grady with the basketball shot clock at four. Collins gets it up to Axel Goodmanson for three. Off the front of the rim, it's good. It's no good, but the rebound by Davidson. Here's a three by Grady. It's too strong. And Isabel will bring it out for the Billikens. One thing that Davidson does very, very well is they get back quickly and take away your fast breaks. And part of it is they only go to the boards with one guy. Four guys get back. Two times in a row, St. Louis has taken advantage of cutters out of the post. This is the first one, French to Foreman, the Rutgers transfer. And they just did it again the second time. Well, the Billikens field goal percentage is 10th in the Atlantic 10. Points per game is 11th in the Atlantic 10. Free throw percentage, and that's something I, I think drives every coach crazy when it's less than 70%. Oh, and part of this is French. He's 34. And tra <laughs> their coach, Travis Ford, shot 92 right. when he was a player at Kentucky. Patch right. comes in. They go smaller. 
Foreman comes out, and Javon Best right there in your screen will now play the four spot instead of the three spot. 80% free throw shooter. He made one and missed the first one. at 6-3. Little token press right here. Makes them take time off the clock a little bit, and then you go back zone. 2-3 variety. Axel Goodman sit along the free throw line. That's not odd to see a point guard along the free throw line, but French is able to pick the pocket of John Axel Goodmanson. Isabel. Notice how they got back, Tom. Yep. And down one of French in a two-handed jam. That was a little too easy. <laughs> that was way too easy. They've gotten three buckets right around in the lane, close in, off passes and brilliant passes. Eight to three, Philippines on top by five. Now Davidson, yesterday Davidson started two of 15 against St. Joseph's. Helen Grady tried to make this uh, two for 11, but now one for 11 of the Wildcats. Wow. And Isabel with the spinning move against Collins. Now backs his way in. Little guy's doing a little post action and it's off the glass. Sometimes he goes crazy, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> he makes a lot of shots. And again, you're saying that the nicest possible way. <laughs> it's a 10-0 run. Well, I'm reminded of Louisville when they had Russ Smith there, and Patino used to call him Rusticulous because of the crazy stuff he did out on mm. the floor, and he was a great player. Under 12 minutes to play here in the first half. It's 10-3 St. Louis. I like the Billikens' defense. It's been very stellar here. Kovacovic has his pocket picked. Lost it, got it back, lost it again, and that's a shot clock violation. St. Louis defense has been there, but the offense has helped as well. The slides inside, French finishes. And how about this? The littlest guy on the floor posted up. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'll tell you what, Davidson would profit if they had a rule where you could bring back one guy you know, who played for you, right? Well, who would you bring back? <laughs> I think Curry, huh? <laughs> 11 and a half to play. Best not as good off the dribble as he is standstill, but the last several games, he can prove that part of his game. Kid is a fanatic worker. Yeah, he's not only worked on his body during the course of his career, but also obviously his shot over the years. Krakovic uh, back in the ball game. Davidson is averaging 24 seconds per possession. And part of it is the token press. By the time they get the ball up the court, now they got to deal with the zone defense. So it takes them a while to get the shot. That was a beautiful shot by Brakovich, who was able to get the missed shot and get it uh, back in. It's a seven-point game. That's a long shot from there, but he's uh, perfectly it. willing to take it. He yeah. sure is. Bess, the same perfect form off the side of the rim. And the rebound by Kellen Grady. Grady's been really conspicuously absent from the offense so far. 18 points last night against St. Joseph's. First team all A-10. Grady is 0 for 4 so far for Davidson. 10-20 to play here in the first half. The winner goes on to face St. Bonaventure. Grady, left side of the lane. And he didn't get the separation he wanted. And then Brykovic was fouled going up. All right, so speaking of Curry, yeah. he did go back to Davidson. There he is. Now, he's not the one on the Speedo. He's the one on the number 30 <laughs> uniform in the student section. That was during the NBA All-Star break in February, which was in Charlotte. Why are those guys wearing bathing suits? <laughs> He also gave the team brand new uniforms yeah, before nice. that ball game. JB, you have more on that? Well, my hard hitting reporting has discovered that the Speedos are because that is the men's swim team ah. that occasionally uh, pops in on a home game to be a distraction during free throws. I don't know which would be more distracting an NBA All Star sitting in the front row <laughs> of your agree. game or yeah. the men's uh, swim team. Where is the swim team? They're not here at, the, at Barclays Center. 12 6 the score. We're nearly halfway through the first half. St. Louis picked Fra to Frampton is one. on Frampton is on Goodwin, which is an interesting matchup because Goodwin is a great offensive rebounder, and there he goes. He got hit, he got to the basket. Ball didn't come his way. Axel Goodman said hand check by Thatch. No, he went out of bounds along the sideline. They're gonna run different guys at Goodmanson. Thatch is kind of a linebacker slash point guard right here, and you can see him. 
Right here, he just stepped out right there in front of Travis Ford. Travis Ford is pointing at it, making sure the officials saw it. A low scoring game to say the least. Favors St. Louis. Here's Isabel for three, and it's good. They gave him too much space to get his feet set and the mechanics right. Way too much. They're doing a very good job on Goodmanson. Even in zone, they're cognizant of his presence when he's in your area. Notice Thatch. He's chasing him through, pointing that he's coming through the lane. Brady looking for Axel Goodmanson. Here's Axel Goodmanson along the baseline, lays it in. That's his first field goal of the afternoon. I think St. Louis will take that instead of the three. They want to run Axel Goodmanson, they want to run Goodmanson, excuse me, off of the three-point line. And a traveling violation called on Hassan French. Let's take a look at the uh, most outstanding player in the Atlantic 10. The ball fake and the drive, he's got speed. That was an easy one. He's the first player at Davidson with over 1,000 points, over 500 rebounds, and over 400 assists. And he's only a junior, as we mentioned. Last night, the game was tied at 60, and he took over at eight of the last 10 points for Davidson. His brother was on St. Louis's team. That's right. First semester and decided to go home and uh, turn pro at home. Right, the bitch down. Oh, he got some space and lays it in. There are some holes and seams in a zone. If you're patient enough and unselfish enough and you have passing skills, you can find them. Well, this is an 8-3 run. Three-pointer from Goodwin, and it's good. I'll tell you, man, when they start making shots like that, they're dangerous. The lead is up to seven. Pelicans three or four from beyond the arc. Frampton for That's three. It. That was right on line. I was sitting right in his line right there. That was in before he released it. Well, now both teams are firing somewhat. Davidson started one of 12. Now four for its last five. Here's Goodwin. Through the paint. Doesn't get it to go down. Goodmanson with the rebound. Goodmanson lurking up the floor. Frankovic saves it on the baseline. He's got away with a double dribble, and he forced the pass, and it was cut off by Goodwin, who went out of bounds. The Wildcats are starting to get things going after a slow start. Ball movement and cutting. Find the seam. Rykovich does that. And this is Frampton. The thing is that we're happy that we don't have to decide <laughs> who the uh, number one seeds are. In some ways, it doesn't matter who's number one and number two, um, depending on the venue and where you are and yeah. what's closest to your fan base. Pritchett back in the ball game for Davidson. He's number 20. Brykovic in the paint, hook shot no good. Foreman was on him. The bad news for Davidson is Brykovic has gotten the shots that he's wanted in this game and hasn't made any. Isabel, his three, did everything but go through the net. As we head towards seven minutes to play in the first half. Kellen Grady right to the rim. Notice how he protected the ball with his off hand as he got close. The defense came and he used his left arm. He didn't push off, but his left arm was in the way of the defender. Under seven minutes left here in the first half. So a nice crowd in game number one. Davidson has traveled well. So is St. Louis considering proximity. The crowds to me have been surprisingly large and vocal. There's Thatch. Thatch cut off. Pritchett did the cutting off. And now Kellen Grady. That was good defense by Keyshawn Pritchett. Pritchett is a guy who can post up. I think they should move him in there a little bit and get Rykovic away from the basket zone. Rykovic was able to steady himself and let Foreman go by before he laid it in. He's been able to score when he's been the recipient of a pass. And staying hydrated, as you can see. Ian Eagle on your right, Jim Spinarco on your left. Spinarco played for me at Duke when I was the assistant there. Was a uh, great, 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 great player. Did Ian play for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. 
Here's best to Isabel. Isabel in the paint. Isabel tried to sweep in with a layup. No good. French battling for the loose ball. Goodmanson's got it. Here they got the numbers. Wildcats. They got numbers here. They should score. Goodmanson for three. It's good. He only had two to that point. He gave a little emphatic move with his hand after that make. That's a 10-0 run now for the Wildcats. Boy, they go through these things where they don't score for a long time, and then they just explode. Goodmanson is five. French trying to answer. Cannot. Brady with the weak side board. Five white jerseys on the boards. That's what you got to have when you don't have super duper athletes on your team in the front court. And again, the zone. Davidson, just like yesterday, started cold. Now heating up 7 4. It's last eight. Frampton way downtown. That was from the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> Look at that smile. 24-18, it's a 13-0 run. St. Louis with five straight misses. That ends right there with DJ Foreman. This is going to be a back-to-back -back thing. We're going to have answers each end. Frampton's three for five from downtown. Kevin Grady thought about a three. Collins in the corner. Kovacovic, I thought he might take the shot from the free throw line. That's not his thing. He's a facilitator. Ten on the shot clock, Grady in the paint, and off the back of the rim, no good. Kovacovic was playing a little volleyball in the save, but it goes to St. Louis. Notice how four guys are back. Yeah, no fast break for no anybody. No fast breaks. French. That's a big deal. Backs his way in against Frampton. Frampton needs some help in the cutoff by Collins. Six turnovers now for St. Louis. Turnovers for Davidson. Take those staying in the zone. Davidson does not mind going deep into the shot clock. Yeah, because they have guys that can create, right? Yeah, and it can, it conserves energy. Woo. And I think Travis Ford's got to get out of the zone now. Yeah, another three. This one by Kellen Grady. The lead is up to seven. It's passing that has been so good for Davidson. You notice the threes they're getting are wow. wide open. How about that? That hedge by Kovacovic forced Goodwin to, to carry. We got a three-point parade going on. And Julianne and her husband were there with Cal and his sister, and they were they were just playing with blocks in the airport. I mean, to see them now, Bob, you know what it tells us. We're getting old. Everybody's growing up. Here's Goodmanson. Goodmanson to Collins, skip pass. Boy, they use the whole court. They're spread out. One guy in the middle, four guys on the outside of the three-point line. Frampton misses the three. He's got a heavy brace on that left He really hand. does. I thought the same thing. Devastating injury. It actually hurt them last year because he would have been a big part of that team, even though they had a lot of pieces. 27-20. Three teams from the Atlantic 10 or more for 11 years in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. Here's best pull up jumper. That's uh, the second one. Yeah, he, he's been working on it. And he made a few last night as well. And the game before that, he made a few. So it's been uh, a very, very prominent and important thing for St. Louis. 1 3 1 zones. They try to trap. If you can break through the trap, shots are going to be open in the corner. Dragovich does not take the shot. Goodmanson will. It's short. Collins with the rebound. Here's Frampton. He won't take the three. Instead, he'll reset the offense. Nice hustle. Kellen Grady initiating some action going through the paint doesn't get the spin and French gets the rebound You've said that a lot in this game. French yeah. gets the rebound It's five rebounds now for French in this first half st. Louis did an interesting thing there They went zone and then during the possession they switched to man-to-man -man. That's hard to play against Is it hard for a team to do that defensively though too? Yes, it is and uh, I'm impressed French is able to lead his way to the basket all right, so even with the, the missed shots by St. Louis, it's just a three-point game because Davidson has missed five of its last six. St. Louis is fine with the way the game is going right now. You like the pressure that they put on defensively? Yeah, I, I think this is good for them. You know, it gets them aggressive. It's their nature. It's hard to play against Davidson, though, when you get spread out. They spread you out. 
You're hustling like crazy all over the place. Coming up on at and the half, Adam Zucker, Swin Cash, Khalid El Amin, John Rothstein, and Jerry Palm are standing by in our New York studio. They'll get you caught up on all the day's scores and highlights. It's all coming up on at and at the half. Pritchett back in for defensive purposes right here. Goodmanson is on Bess. Bess should try to put the ball on the floor and get that thing going like he did the last several possessions. There he is. Here's Foreman. He cleans it up off the air and pass, and he's fouled going up. We've only had four free throws between the two teams. Let's go back a couple possessions. Right here, French uses his offhand, and that is a not an easy shot, but he's such a powerful player. You know, as a strategy, they really should foul him in that situation. He's only a 34% free throw shooter. Now, in the first half, you don't want to do that so much because then you get your well, guys in point. foul trouble, right? But if you're using subs, you know, and you or you're late in the second half, that's something that you're going to see in this game. Foreman gets the first free throw to go down. He has five. Kovacovic comes in. Brekovic will go out. Brekovic has been playing with two fouls yeah. for most of this half, but he's played a lot. See, Kovacovic could do what we were just talking about. He could play aggressively and foul French if he got the ball close to the basket. Second free throw was good. It's 27-26. 8-3 run has narrowed this lead to one. Pressure defense by St. Louis. Brampton inside for Kovacovic. Trying to get deep as deep as he can. Goodmanson cut off. Nice D. Great D. Great D. Here's Grady trying to break that defense. It's no good. It's a shot clock violation. That was awesome defense by St. Louis. Yeah, they you talk about it. guys who are determined and moving their feet, staying between their man and the basket. Let's take a look and admire Thatch. The challenge by French. Four guys on the glass. That's what you want. All right, so shot clock is off. The Billikens, I'm assuming, are just going to hold it for the last shot. You would think. But Isabel, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel's averaged 19 points the last nine games. He has the basketball. He's looking at Travis Ford, who is still a point guard as the head coach of the Billikens. They're in zone. They're, they've played less zone than I thought they'd play in this first half. They want Bess to pop. There is Bess, and he's fouled on the floor. Nicely done. They went a little too soon. Davidson's still going to have an opportunity right here. But they got the ball to Bess, and he put it on the ground, and he got fouled. And he's an excellent free throw shooter, but I think this is a foul beforehand. They're gonna say it's a foul on the floor. Yeah. So, so no, no shots. Well, and the game clock is at 6.9. I thought they were gonna give continuation here. Yeah, there's no continuation in college. Well, I know, but you You're know the foul. Guy. <laughs> Here's Bess, four on the game clock. His three is good! Wow. And the Billikens with a two point lead. We got a technical foul here. I don't know if it's on Bess or it's on St. Louis. Somebody showed some unsportsmanlike conduct right mm -hmm. here. I don't know if we have it. Let's take a look at the great part of this, which is the shot. Bess makes this from way deep. Nice screen by French. Well, Bess didn't do anything. I don't anything. think it was Bess. It's going to go against Goodwin. Jordan Goodwin called for the technical foul. Watch zero right here as the three goes in. Well, Goodwin's an aggressive player. There's no doubt about that. They're both boxing each other out. I don't know if that's a technical uh, foul. Well, Goodmanson will go to the free throw line. And he can tie this game up with 1.9 to play. Travis Best just put both hands on his head and threw his hair back. I don't know. That was not intentional or anything like that by Goodwin. I mean, that, that kind of play is... Let's this, take a look. I think this is it, but, I mean, this kind of stuff goes on all the time. Unless something happened afterward, but it didn't seem like it did. So Goodwin will check out. Well, the game is tied. It's probably going to end tied. And it's been good both ways. 
We've had some spurts by both teams. We've had Davidson staying in their lane, so to speak, shooting a lot of threes. And Grady calls a timeout at midcourt with 1.5 to play. Right uh, left-hand corner, or Grady gets a fade screen. A lot of moving parts. Time is winding down. That shot will not count, even if it had gone. So we will end that. He said, I thought St. Louis would play mostly man to man. Well, you know, they, they mixed it up. And in this tournament, they have played a lot of zone. Yep. 2 3 and 1 3 1, and full court pressure trapping as well. So uh, it has been productive. And as we say that, Davidson opens in zone. Yeah, Davidson played a lot of zone, particularly in the second half. The last time these two teams faced each other, it was a one point game. 54-53, Jordan Goodwin missed two free throws with .6 remaining. And one would have uh, tied, and the other one would have won it. Isabel in the first half had one of those that didn't go down, and that one does. It's 32-29, St. Louis. Little change of defense here. Foreman at six foot eight is at the point of this 1-3-1. One, one. Now, I saw them do French, this earlier this year. I like that. French plays the middle. So he is responsible for people going to the basket. Bess is in the back. He has to run from corner to corner. They have now switched into man-to-man -man out of the 1-3-1. One, one. This is tough. Rakovic over the top of French. He just had more height than, than French did. Yeah, and, and but he's one for four on that type of shot in the game so far. 32-31, St. Louis up by one. When St. Louis goes back defensively, I want, I want you to give your theory on what you would, what kind of player you would put up top. As French is fouled by Brejkovic, that's number three on Brejkovic. Well, here's Davidson's movement. They isolate Brejkovic, and right here, if you do not double-team him, he's going to get in close. And as you mentioned, Tom, he uses his height advantage right there, but he's got the fouls. Bob McKillop called him crafty. Well, now he's going to call him over to the bench because he has three personal fouls. <laughs> he's old school as a way to look at him as well. Isabel short on the drive. Foreman with the rebound. Backboard got in the way. He will now pull it back out. I think that's a good decision. And a lot of traffic in there. Kovacevic was there as well. He denied. He moves well. He does. Number 43, the backup center he's from Serbia. He's, he's pretty he's good. like a lot of the European players that Bob McKillop brings over. Shot clock under 10. Goodwin thought about the three. Step back against Frampton. Good defense. Here's Best. Three on the shot clock. It's short. And they go out of bounds. It'll be a shot clock violation. Uh, Bob McKillop has done such an amazing job. He's uh, had players that have been on been from 21 different countries. 21 during his career. He's always recruited well overseas. Very early in his career, he was one of the first coaches to do that. Gives clinics over there, has developed relationships with people there. They like him. He's a very likable and good coach, and they respect that. So it's been very, very good for him. That's how he wound up with Goodmanson. He had done clinics over in Iceland 25 years ago and kept the same contacts. Fortunately from, for him, Curry was like five miles well, from Dayton's campus. Shot clock was at two. Yeah, that turned out pretty well for him. <laughs> 17 and a half to play, Isabel. Both yes. teams have gone deep into the shot clock and, and not good things have happened. Early in the shot clock is good for that guy. Isabel has tremendous range. He is uh, something that we're seeing more often in college basketball. And that is a player that's been with three different schools during their college career. Missouri, and then Drexel, odd, odd transition, and now St. Louis. The good part about that is you don't get bored with the coach's speeches. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> There's Kellen Grady, mid-range jumper is no good. And the rebound is taken down by Goodwin. Outlet pass to Isabel. Isabel trying to get the contact and the kiss off the glass. He's got eight to start the second half, and Kellen Grady has made 21 shots, and he's assisted on 15. So you can say... He has been a dominant player so far. Over 1,300 career points. Goodmanson has only taken four shots in the game. That's way too few. Let's see if they find him here. He's off on the right side in front of the Davidson bench. 
Here's Frampton for three, and it's no good. And the rebound by Goodwin. That's a big time rebound right there. Yeah, because that would have been a big time shot. Isabel to the basket, off the glass, it's good. He is in the zone, my friend. Sure is. Just let him go. And Goodmanson trying to answer, and Goodmanson doesn't get the roll. He may have forced that one to try to get some contacts. Good judgment by Goodwin here. 7-0 run for St. Louis. The lead is eight. Isabel again sweeps in, blocked away by Pritchett, saved by Goodwin for three. Good. Wow. When that starts happening like it did the other night, this is why this team was considered the number one team in the preseason. Yeah, preseason St. Louis was one, St. Joseph's was two. Both lost players during the course of the year. Cartier Gordon for St. Louis left, 6'9 freshman, transferred to DePaul. And the three of the answer is no good. That one may have been forced from the corner. This drought is extended up over four minutes for Davidson. Bob McKillop was just clapping his hands and nodding his head in a positive way, as if to say, don't worry about that miss, we're going to make those. Well, they can go on a run just as uh, we can, we've seen St. Louis go on this run. Best pull-up jumper. Boy, he's been sweet with that today. Forget about it. Five of six from the field. Best defensive guy in the league. He's got the pull-up game now. All things good right now. All things possible for the Billikens. Davidson has missed 12 of its last 14 shots. The 1-3-1 is bothering them. You like Foreman, the big man up front. You like a big guy up front on the one Yeah, it makes it difficult to pass side to side. Also, he rebounds the front of the rim. It's his responsibility. Tremaine Isabel has been nothing short of spectacular in this game. And all, and all of a sudden, some of these older guys, they, they sort of turn up yeah, their level yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's the, the end is close, and they say, hey, all caution to the wind, man. Play your heart out. Covering Carter Collins out front. Isabel, you know, he averaged 21 points yes, a game he yep. when he was at Drexel. That's a lot of points. Here's Collins for three. It's no good. And the putback, I think French, French. hit that in. Yeah, he did. St. Louis's French hit that in. <laughs> They'll give it to uh, Reykjavich. Reykjavich for sure. He has 12 points, three rebounds, under 14 to play. Isabel, entry pass to French. French has it blocked away by Brekovic. Boy, Davidson needed these last two possessions. I like the zone that they're using here. As long as they find Isabel and edge toward him in the zone, I think it's good strategy. By the way, Goodmanson is on the bench. He hasn't sat much at all. Brekovic backs his way in against Foreman, still backing his way in, yeah. leaned in, and just didn't get the angle he wanted. Or maybe he, he had the angle, he just didn't get the finish. He's he had wanted. a bunch of those plays, and you know, they're being physical with him, and they're not double teaming him because he's a good passer. They would rather have him go one on one than give up an open three on his pass out. Isabel, three players around him. Here's Bess. Bess, pull up jumper from the elbow is good. I cannot tell you how important and how I'm amazed that he is making all of these pull up jump shots because he has not been doing that all season long. His legs are into it. He was hurt earlier in the year. You gotta have strong legs to go up. Look at the spin on that ball. That is perfect. You know, sometimes you root for kids because they're such hard oh, workers. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. And he's one of those guys. It's like Jeff Doughton earlier uh, for Rhode Island. He works his tail off. Best said earlier this year, I, I wanna see more hunger in everyone's eyes. They have to be more locked in. This is for a team that started out 5-0 and in the conference, didn't finish with that great of a record in the conference. Pritchett misses. Rykovic uh, is fouled on the floor. Here are today's devour teams that are hungry for a bid. Well, the Creighton Blue Jays, uh, I'm not so sure about that. Furman would be interesting because they beat Villanova. I think everybody's cheering for Belmont. And the Wolfpack struggling a little bit down the stretch here. These are the last four out, according to our own Jerry Palm. Belmont, I, I think a lot of people thought if the Atlantic 10 had one bid, might have gotten in. Yeah, yeah. Or even if yep. St. Mary's had not beaten Gonzaga, yep. might have gotten in. 12.40 yep. to play. 
Carter Collins. This is man to man here. And a foul down low again. Speaking, BC, speaking of VCU, this is what happened yesterday in the game against Rhode Island. Marcus Evans, outstanding player. It's just a shame to see this. He went down with a hyperextended knee and a bone bruise. I was sitting on the sideline here, Tom, mm -hmm. and watching that, and I mean, he was saying, I thought I heard him say, oh my, my career might be over. Oh man, that is just I mean, heartbreaking. And he was in pain, man. I mean, he was really, he was down for a long time. And I'm sure the, the point that you were trying to make is, is uh, we're going to go to Jamie on this, yeah? Yeah. What do you got, Jay? Well, once VCU made it back to campus this morning, Evans did undergo a more extensive testing, and an MRI showed no constructional damage to that knee. Uh, he is preparing, as uh, Coach Rhodes said to the in a statement, that preparing to play in the NCAA tournament as VCU, ho VCU hopes to get that at-large bid. Yeah, great news. Oh, I don't think there's any question that they will be in the NCAA yes. tournament. His presence or non-presence, you know, they've earned it. The question, of course, is what seed they will be and whether they take a look at that and say, is he going to play, is he not going to play, does that affect their seed? But I don't think it's dramatic. Two missed free throws for the Wildcats, and now the near turnover by St. Louis. Here's Goodwin for three. It's no good. French had the rebound, then lost it. And Rykovic pulls it off the floor. It's a 13-point game. The number two seed, Davidson, trails by 13 to the six seed, St. Louis. St. Louis team was picked first in the Atlantic 10. Davidson does not have blow-by guys. They really don't have anybody on the team, other than Goodmanson a little bit, who can really take it and go and beat somebody. Here's Frampton too strong, and an easy rebound for French. That rebound is number seven for French. There is heavy-duty pressure on the Davidson Wildcats right now. I know there's a ton of time left, and Bob McKillop is a very positive guy on the sidelines. But the players themselves have to feel frustrated here. And French, I don't think he realized he was that open. He turned the wrong way on the baseline. He's down hurt. And a foul is called. And I think Foreman's going to go to the free throw line. And he'll do so after this timeout. We'll keep an eye on French. I think he may have gotten poked in the eye. Let's take a look at it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right there, it happened yep. early. He kept on playing, even though it looked yep. like he was poked. So they tend to him. We'll have a timeout, 11.26 to play in the second half. St. Louis up 13. Pain of getting poked in the eye mid-basketball play, as I'm sure we can all imagine, is very painful. Jamie, you know all the hard-hitting questions that we are <laughs> Does he about. have contact? Might be a HIPAA violation. I'm checking. <laughs> Foreman makes the first free throw. He's just 56%, but he made the first one. You know, he is the type of player that, you know, I mean, even if his eye is watering, he's not going to shoot that much. I mean, he can be in there. This is this is danger time for St. Louis. Goodmanson, by the way, back in for Davidson. Again, the zone. Here's Frampton for three. No good. And Foreman with the rebound. That's number eight for Foreman. Actually, make it nine. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. You know, with the, the guys are in correct position. The big guys are in correct position for rebounding in these zones. Wow, what a look by Isabel to Foreman who lays it in. Nice hands also. How about this steal try? Isabel felt like that ball was knocked off the leg of a Davidson player. Take a look at this pass. Beautiful bounce pass. It was low and Foreman's long arms enabled him to get that. Foreman now playing the middle where French was. Best playing the top. Then they switch into man-to-man. -man. Goodmanson for three, and it's good. That was silky smooth. They need him terribly right now. He has been absent from the offense the entire game. And he... Down, yeah. Yep. Grady had been struggling at that point. He, sh he shuts everybody down. Interesting. Three-quarter court situation. Maybe try to get one trap, and then back into zone. Isabel able to get across the timeline with a few seconds to spare. Who on the interior can be a good passer? French is back in. That's good news for St. Louis. He sets the screen. Isabel gets control. Here's Best for three. And it's good. He is on fire. I mean, call the fire department, man. I mean, this guy is really, really in the groove. Now it's a 16-point game. We're halfway through the first half. Goodmanson 
And he cans a three over the top of French. That was from three feet at least beyond the arc. Oh, man. This is great stuff. Best is seven of nine from the field. Yeah, this is the best I've seen Best shoot the basketball. Indeed. Me too. Isabel, a little hovering. And he goes right through the defense, goes to the basket, and is bumped by Brykovic. I think that's four fouls on Brykovic. It will be if it's him. St. Louis, dribble penetration. Find your best guy. He tees that one up. On the other side, Goodmanson says, you can do that. I can too. Mm. Nylon. That's nice stuff. And by the way, Brykovic will check out of the ball game. He has four fouls. Nine and a half to play. Isabel going to the basket, stripped away by Kellen Grady, and that's going to be a foul on Grady. Brykovic is out. Kovacovic is in. They don't lose a lot in terms of their defense with Kovacovic in the game. Billikens, 41% on the year. Way, way above that today. Well, we mentioned yesterday offensively they were solid. They shot 42% yesterday. And this is just a, a hair better. If you haven't watched St. Louis play this year, I thought their best offensive game was yesterday until this game. Here's Isabel for three, and it's off the front of the rim. And Keyshawn Pritchett with the rebound. I stood next to Pritchett before the ball game. I thought like I was standing next to a 30-year-old man. <laughs> Nine minutes to play. The chance to move on to face St. Bonaventure in tomorrow's championship on CBS. Goodmanson cut off. Keeping his dribble going. Finds Grady. Shot clock at four. Grady. Shot clock at three. Let's it fly. It's no good. And Bess with the rebounds. The problem is that Grady is such a good player, but when a good player who's a 17-point-a-game guy is having a bad night, when do you tell him, hey, you know, give it up to somebody else? Absolutely. When do you take him out? You know, those are the coaching decisions that really are very, very difficult. Isabel sweeps it to Bess. Shot fake. This is a two-pointer. Baseline, it's good. Again, Bess is playing, I think, his best offensive game. He's no doubt about it. For the floor. We need to put a T on the end of his game. Mm. On the end of his jersey. Best. Not best. He's playing great. Eight minutes to play here in the second half. Goodmanson's three is no good. And the rebound by French. That's number eight for him. Pretty soon, Bob McKillop is going to have to send some guys to the offensive glass because they're missing shots, especially deep shots. And they need to get some offensive boards because... It's getting to be a situation where it's tougher and tougher for them. Thatch with the miss off the uh, air ball. Now Frampton. Grady, he's open for three, and Grady a little too strong. I think he's going side. You know, that one was right in our vision. I think he's shooting the ball sideways a little bit. I think he's fading a little bit. His feet are pointing to the left instead of at the basket. We got tired players out here right now. Isabel thought about the long range three. Here's Goodwin on the baseline. A blocking foul is called. It's been all Billikens this afternoon. 54 39. Plenty of time left. 3 on, uh, 7 7 to play. Yeah, but 39 but points. 39 points. 20, you know, th this many minutes? I mean, wow. 33 minutes. Best thought about going into French. Can you play from behind, okay? You're going to be behind in games. Can you play from behind? That means can you get after it defensively and force turnovers? And I'm not sure Davidson can do that. By the way, that shot by Isabel hit the front of the rim, but the shot clock did not reset, which is why St. Louis shot so quickly. And Frampton misses the three, saved by Grady. That's not backcourt. Goodmanson does have 13 points on four of eight, three of six from downtown. So he can get hot. That's just what he did yesterday against uh, St. Joseph's. He missed that one. It bubbled right out of the rim. Wow. Those are shots he typically makes. Now Isabel hedges just a bit. Bounce pass to French. French leaves it for Thatch. 
That's a good decision. Here's Isabel for three, and it's no good. That was too strong. Whistle blows, and a foul called on Goodwin. Reminder tomorrow, championship game, 1 o'clock on CBS. Number four seed, St. Bonaventure, will take on either number two, Davidson, number six, St. Louis. Congratulations to the Bonnies and Mark Schmidt, an NCAA tournament team a year ago, lost 3,000 points from graduation, more than that, and have three freshmen that are instrumental in their run right now to the championship. 26 wins last year, beat UCLA in the first four. No one expected them to be this deep into the Atlantic 10 tournament for sure. One of the best coaching jobs in a very illustrious career for Mark Schmidt, who's the all-time winningest coach at St. Bonaventure, and now a bumping foul is called. 5.58 to play in the second half. This is what Bob's talking about. Davidson, they score 71.4 per game, and they only have 39 today. That's, that's unbelievable, and credit the defense of St. Louis. I mean, that, Travis Ford has done a remarkable job coaching this team, too, because in the middle of the season, they lost seven straight. Yes. And it looked like they were going way, way down. And they have responded. They are a man-to-man -man team that now plays zone most of the time in this tournament, anyway. Frampton's three is no good after the miss by Goodmanson. At one point, Davidson was on an eight for nine run in this game, and everything was good. But beyond that eight for nine run from the floor, they're six for 41 from the floor. Wow. And that was first half, right? That was first eight half. Foreman to the corner for Bess. Bess heading to the rim, blocked away, out of bounds. It'll remain St. Louis basketball with seven on the shot clock. Good win will inbound the basketball on the baseline. Gets it in for Bess. Bess to the free throw line. He got there quickly. Has, uh, has he missed a pull-up jumper? I, I don't think he has. I think the only ball he missed, he missed the three, and I think he missed the ball inside. That was it. Wow. He has. He must have made seven pull-up jump shots in this game. And that's not his game. It's the largest lead for St. Louis. I wonder if it's going to become more of his game than he's been successful <laughs> with it today. No doubt about it. Brady. Through the paint, heading in, spins it off the glass, and he'll go to the free throw line for a three-point play. This is a difficult shot. He gets into traffic, uses his offhand, and spins it as well. And at the other end, Javon Best, the pull-up jump shot. Take a look at this, his feet position. He does fade a little on this one. But, I mean, he has been radar today. Kellen Grady's uh, three-point play opportunity is no good. That was his first free throw attempt of the game. Three for 16 from the field for Grady. And a foul on Collins, who fouls Isabel, who's not the best guy to foul. <laughs> that foul, by the way, on uh, Davidson is number six. So both teams will be shooting the rest of the way, but it's been a very clean game. Not many free throws by either team. Both teams four for six from the free throw line for the game so far. Foreman setting a little bit of a screen for Isabel, and he's just trying to kill some time. Yeah, Isabel's just resting. Yeah, you've said that a couple of times today. I never really thought about it that way offensively. Well, look at all this dribbling he does, no, no you know, and, and these shots that he's taking. That takes a lot of energy. And a battle for the loose ball, and I believe the Bilkins went out of bounds. DJ Foreman went out of bounds. This is excellent defense right here, and hustle by Grady. Foreman and Grady get tied up right in front of us. Yeah, watch the Foreman's foot right there, out of bounds. Yep. And even though there wasn't a whole lot of possession, they both fought, they both had their hands on the basketball. 420 to play. French can move his feet for a guy his size and width. He can go laterally. And the way they're playing defense, they got to move. Here's Collins for three, no good. French battling for that loose ball, gets it into the hands of Bess. And you're right, he got it into the hands. Bess is going to get credit for that rebound, but really it was French. These guys are tired. We are minus four minutes to play in the second half. When you say these guys, you mean both teams. Both teams, yeah. And this is what you want to do if you're St. Louis, you know, 
Get a little rest so that you have energy on defense. There you got Isabel who goes right through the defense into the paint. No good. Rebound by French. Put back is good. Count the bucket. How about him going up with his left hand like that? French is an athlete. Sideways quickness and elevation and hops. It pays dividends for this team on the free throws that a photographer sent to him and he put it as the background on his phone. He did not ignore the situation. He actually grew from it. He made 500 free throws the next few days and he really learned how he can contribute to a game beyond just missing free throws in that scenario. Travis Ford really relies on him to be a steady presence uh, more than just point production in situations like that. It was a challenging moment, but he faced the media for about 15 minutes after the game. He really grew from it and he is a mature steadying presence despite that frustrating January 26th event. Yeah, the folks at St. Louis said that he hasn't talked about today's game, but they know that it was burning inside him to play well against Davidson after that game. And he certainly has. Yeah. And if he didn't play well last night, they wouldn't be here either. 17 points and nine rebounds. He's an amazing offensive rebounder. On a team that has good rebounders like French and Foreman and Best, he's the best offensive rebounder on this team by far. Uh, Goodmanson makes the first free throw. All right, let's give you a little bit of a, a rundown of what happened here today. In game one, Rhode Island had a 15-point lead and was erased in the second half by St. Bonaventure, went on to win that game and won it rather easily. In this game, Davidson had a seven-point lead. Since that time, it is a 39-15 run. Now 39-16 run for St. Louis. That's amazing. That's an amazing statistic. But when you're watching the game, I mean, it became all St. Louis at both ends of the floor. Their stifling defense was typical of them, but the offense has been untypical, atypical of them. And it's, it's why in the preseason they were picked number one in the league. People thought they would be good offensively like this, but they hadn't been, but they are now. Malcolm winner, Bates Jones in for the first time for Davidson as we head toward the three minute mark. Here in the second half, and St. Louis has really done a well of a job milking this clock the last seven minutes. Isabel to Goodwin with an easy two-handed jam. Well, if they go ahead and continue to play like this the rest of the game and get this W, they will have beaten the two and the three seeds yes. in the tournament. And done so on back-to-back -back nights. Yep. Winter's three is no good. Tonight at 8.30 Eastern, don't miss as Western Kentucky battles Old Dominion in the Air Force Reserve Conference USA Championship, where a ticket to the big dance is on the line. It's all right here on CBS Sports Network. Driving to the basket and the dish for the easy one. That was beautiful between Goodwin and Isabel. Well, earlier we uh, saw Hassan French get hit in the uh, eye. He did not have contacts. <laughs> Javon Bess, on the other hand, does have a contact. As they try to moisten it up. Bob, I've been trying to go to one contact, as mm -hmm. you know, just for reading. Yeah. And it's not going all that well. <laughs> so Bess just put that in without blinking an eye. And it takes me about 15 minutes to put one contact in. Oh, this is the first time you're having contacts? I had them in high school, but it's not working out as well as it did then. <laughs> 2.48 to play here in the second half. I think everybody's eyes are okay. St. Louis would bound the basketball. I don't want to look too far ahead. Full court pressure right here by Davidson. And it's a, it's a timeout situation here. Travis Best is asking Lee Cassell. He says, no, I didn't call the timeout. Hey, seven seconds to get the ball on the back. All right, they have seven seconds, Bill Covington just told us, St. Louis does to get the ball across the timeline. All right, let's uh, hold on one more second. We got and a foul. foul called against Davidson. That foul is going to go against Carter Collins. Well, that was the first time that they're pressing in this game, and they are not a pressing team. They're not built that way. So when you get behind by a lot in late game situations, it's tough for Davidson to come back. Well, that'll send Isabel to the free throw line. Travis Ford should think a little bit about 
keeping French on the bench out of the game while his team has the basketball because he's such a poor free throw shooter. Mm. He's 34% on the year. You want him in there for defensive purposes. So with Isabel on the line, they're going to be on defense, so French still in the game. Isabel's front end of the one and one no good. Yeah, the rebound by Frampton. Here comes Goodmanson. Goodmanson, the player of the year in the Atlantic 10, has 15 points. Frampton has it knocked away, gets it back, loses it again. I guess he really never had control the second time. And, and Goodwin poked it out of his hands as well. Two minutes, 30 seconds to play in the second half. You don't want the ball in the air that long. Again, St. Louis has spent the last six minutes or so doing this, running the shot clock down. They find French in the low post. And an offensive foul called, I believe? No. Yeah, offensive yeah. foul called on French. Right. Interesting on this one. A lot of crowd right here. And he, when he made his turn to go to his left shoulder, they call the offensive on him. Kelly Grady hops through some defense, 14 feet away. His shot is off the mark, and things just aren't falling for Davidson. No, I know it's, it's easy not to their say. day, right? Not their day. And now with two minutes to le left to play, Isabel will go to the line. And we kind of fast forward to, I mean, tomorrow you'll have St. Louis and St. Bonaventure. But what is the fate of Davidson with 24 wins in a good conference? What is their fate going into the postseason? Well, that's a good question. You would hope that they would have an opportunity at the NCAA bid, but my feeling is that they don't. Um, and whether they're an NIT team, you know, that would be great. You know, mm -hmm. long ago, the NIT was not run by the NCAA. The NCAA now owns the NIT. So right. they have a few rules about conference champions who win the regular season and don't get a bid go. Uh, so that takes up some spots. Well, they are a good team. There's no doubt about it. They've had a heck of a year. Their mantra has been get better every day. And for Davidson, they have done that. But today, they just haven't shot the way everybody expected that they would. And, and that's, you know, that's what they have to have. I mean, when they don't have that, it, it, um, the problems become magnified and their situation becomes magnified and much more difficult. Davidson field goal percentage 45.4. That's third best in the Atlantic 10. They're nowhere near that today. And now with under two minutes to play, St. Louis will continue to milk the clock with a 20-point lead. And their fans who have made their way from the Midwest out here to the East Coast. Led by Dick Shapitz, who's got his hands up uh, in the, the first row, trying to get the rest of the crowd up. The last time St. Louis was at the Barclays, they won it. When the Atlantic 10 tournament was here, and I guess it was 2013, I think. Isabel trying to stay. Oh, in the man, and the lane is good by Bess as the shot clock expires. How did he keep his dribble? <laughs> Collins for three. It's no good. And the rebound by Bess. That is the seventh rebound for Bess. 24 points, seven rebounds for Javon Bess. And Isabel is able to get across the timeline. And now the Billikens are going to clear their bench. Whistle blows and a foul called. A foul will go against Kellen Grady. Some mass substitutions. Isabel falls down here, keeps his dribble while he goes down, and <laughs> gets the ball to Bess. And easiest shot of the game for Bess. You know, the guys on the Davidson bench aren't happy. It but as you mentioned, Tom, they, I mean, they had a great year. Yes. 24 wins, that's big stuff. Well, look at the pride on the face of their fans as substitutions for both teams. Davidson will clear its bench. St. Louis will do the same, and the celebration has begun for the Billikens, who were picked number one by the coaches at the start of this year, began the conference season 5-0, and but then faltered as the year went on, and now find themselves just a minute away from getting to the Atlantic 10 championship game tomorrow. Isabel will check out. Boy, what a tournament Isabel has had, right? 19 oh, oh, points. Man. 24 the other night. 
He has been on fire the last nine games. 50 seconds to play. St. Louis continues to play defense. That whistle blows a foul on the floor. It was actually a nice move along the baseline, wasn't it? <laughs> it certainly was. These guys practice too. Well, they're probably thinking, uh, I want a chance. Exactly. So to the line go the Wildcats down 67 43. Yeah, the first free throw is no good. Well, Nelson is a big kid. There's no doubt about that. Long arms and a physical presence. And he makes the second free throw. Well, the commissioner of the Atlantic 10, Bernadette McGlade, is on the committee. And of course, when any conversations about Atlantic 10 teams are being discussed, she must exit, exit. the room. Yep. Yep. After Bochi Yodem's uh, free throw is good, the Billikins will just hang on to the basketball. Demarius Jacobs just dribbling right near the emblem. I want to see somebody take a shot. <laughs> One of these guys that don't get a chance to do it that often. Yeah. Welmer. Yeah, Welmer, who was they thought was going to be an impact player, has just been injured. Four seconds to play, and that'll be the uh, final opportunity for the Wildcats. And that's it. The St. Louis Billiton.